Hello everyone. Today I wanted to continue on uh, discussing uh, the films of Masaki Kobayashi. Uh, these are the pre-human, the human condition movies. Um, today, 1956, The Thick Walled Room. <clears throat> this was released in 1956, but made a few years earlier. It's a very controversial subject about sea, what they were called sea level prisoners. Um, intern at Tsugamo Prison in Tokyo, and these were war uh, pris prisoners of war who had been convicted of atrocities, um, but they were low-level um, uh, low-level soldiers. Uh, and, and Kobayashi has used a, a book of uh, memoir of, of people who were in prison. They actually wrote their experiences in prison. Uh, when the when the uh, when Kobayashi made this film, um, his studio Shoshiko did not want it released. wasn't the right time. Uh, but by the time of 1956, there had been several movies that were uh, protests uh, uh, against uh, the internment of uh, these low-level uh, Japanese soldiers who were being punished much more severely than. Uh, than their superiors have been um, had been punished, and they were the 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 uh, Japanese soldiers who had been um, who had been convicted of atrocities. They were accused. They were they were considered A level, which was General Tojo and and the the big brass, and then there was B and C. Uh, B was sort of crimes against humanity see where these kind of prisoners that uh, the Kobayashi's The Thick Walled Room um, is portraying. And um, so we see six, uh, six or seven, I forget which, but there's three main characters in the, in, in the movie. And we do see, in flashbacks, we do see the killings that they, that they perpetrated. Um, and uh, they were, the, and these killings were done reluctantly. Uh, they were ordered. They didn't want to do it, but uh, they, they had to follow orders. It was uh, they simply couldn't. Uh, that was how you survived in the army. You have to follow orders. Uh, and but it, they're tormented by the memory of it. So, so some of these prisoners believe that they're being punished fairly, that they've done wrong, and they need to regain a sense of. Um, of honor, others believe that these A level uh, they were being that they're being punished unfairly because the A level um, uh, the the A level accused um, Japanese soldiers the the top the top of the line they they got off relatively easy. Of course, General Tojo and uh, many of the other uh, well, I, I think in this actual prison, Sugamo Prison, where D General Tojo Tojo was hung. Um, I think there was seven or eight more. I'm not sure how many more. Uh, uh, I know General Yamashita was was hung, uh, who was uh, oversaw some of the um, atrocities that were committed in the um, in Singapore, uh, where he was in command. Um, but for the most part, the A the uh, A level uh, uh, people who had been accused of atrocities got off pretty light. And they, most of those were out of prison, but well before the um, the low level uh, prisoners uh, were released, and I think one A level pr uh, uh, accused uh, prisoner uh, years later becomes the premier of Japan. Uh, so some of them thought they they were being punished fairly. Uh, some of them thought they were scapegoats. Some saw a need to be punished, but all of them are absolutely tormented and haunted by history. And this is, of course, uh, Kobayashi's big theme. He himself was haunted. He, uh, he served in, um, in Manchuria. I'm not sure how much of the atrocities he saw there. But um, uh, so this is kind of a propaganda film. This is a film that, that that is designed, especially when it was originally made, designed so that um, the public would get on the side that these people have to be released. Now, this is all part of the um, of the occupation force in the beginning, but they were still in prison after the occupation force left. 
and the occupation force had largely, and Japanese uh, citizens in general were were kind of urged to believe that 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 they were all victims. They were victims of this nationalistic military regime that uh, they were to blame. And, and Americans particularly didn't want the emperor to be blamed, uh, seeing him as a source of, uh, um, a source of keeping the society together. Um, so <clears throat> these, these prisoners uh, begin to think of themselves as their, as their punishment uh, continues on for years. And this, this film does uh, encompass quite a few years. Um, and and uh, in Stephen Prince's book, A Dream of Resistance, uh, the cinema of, of Kobayashi, fantastic book, and he talks a whole lot about the historical significance of the thick walled room, which he believes is the first really great um, uh, Kobayashi movie, the one where he does resist the, um, he does resist authoritarianism uh, or at least he exposes authoritarianism. Um, and uh, as part of this, there's also this left-wing communist element that runs through it that, that uh, through, the, through the prison itself, and this was historically accurate in that, um, uh, that there is something so sick in this society that it has to be changed. We have to find some different ways that we're too vulnerable to this kind of nationalistic and, and uh, Kind of uh, uh, the emperor, the, the worship of the emperor. We have to have, we have to find a different way. And but but Kobayashi again, as I said, these are low level um, uh, these are low level soldiers, but they nevertheless are on a journey, a Kobayashi like journey to some sort of self knowledge. Um, and it's very well illustrated. Kobayashi is using uh, some very surreal effects, especially in the flashbacks and how illustrating the torment that these low level soldiers are going through. And, um, and I, I, I'm gonna quote a real brief quote from Stephen Prince's book uh, as, as to kind of des describe this journey that these prisoners are going under. And he said that, this is Stephen Prince, Apprehending this world is a necessary but lower stage of truth in a journey that must take us beyond the senses. That is the path that Kobayashi travels in his films and that he invites the viewer to embark upon. So this is, uh, this movie, The Thick Walled Room, is part of, uh, of a, uh, a four movie DVD eclipse set that uh, Criterion uh, released a few years ago. None of them have, have gotten Blu-ray upgrades. Uh, this one is probably, The Thick Walled Room is probably never going to get one until it gets massively restored because it's it's not in very good shape. It's, it's uh, kind of dim. Uh, I can only imagine how, how fantastically more <laughs> this film, the impact of this film would be if we were to see it on a, on a, uh, a beautifully restored print. Uh, so even though this is Kobayashi's second movie, it, re it was released as his sixth movie. And there's two more that are also chronologically released movies. Uh, I Will Buy You a Baseball Movie. Yes, we have a baseball movie coming. And, um, and also Black River, which is an astonishing, overwhelming movie. <laughs> I, I, still, I, I still haven't been able to shake off the, uh, the power of, of uh, Black River. And then we come to The Human Condition, uh, which uh, I, I've seen everything now. I haven't done videos on, on the, those other two movies, but I've seen everything now uh, up to The Human Condition, so I'll be starting that soon. But there's an, the fourth movie in that, in, in that set of uh, Eclipse set of Kobayashi movies is The Inheritance, which I believe follows The Human Condition and before Kwaidan and Harakari, which are also, as, long, as well as the um, human condition on a Criterion Blu-ray. Okay, that about wrap this, this video up. Uh, as always, thanks uh, to everybody who listened. Uh, comments would be welcome. You guys take care, and I will catch you next time.